Welcome to the Mortgage Show here on News Talk 1010. I'm Jay Michaels. In for Ian Grant. I can't wait to find out what, what, the, what, the, what the, the thinking is behind this music today. I'm fascinated by it. Jay. Providing the industry, leading direction, and customer service that Connect is known for. My guest this hour, founder and CEO of Connect, Marcus Efres. Same one. Principal broker, Justin Turner. Bonjour. And CSR specialist, Matthew Scanlon. Hey, guys. How's it going, man? Hello. It's, it's going well. I'll get the business out of the way first, then we'll jump in. Our lines are open for your calls, questions, and comments. 416-872-1010. You can also send us a text message at 71010. So earlier earlier this week, I was on the email chain. We were talking Red Hot Chili Peppers was was going to be a theme. Traveling Wilburys ended up being a theme today. Do you guys, you guys pick music every single week, and do you base it on anything? Well, so as you know, Jay, we are doing a show about mortgages. Yes. And it can be difficult at times to keep a show like this engaging. So we, <laughs> we try to have fun with the music. <laughs> and today I was thinking about the Traveling Wilbury song, Congratulations. It's one of my favorites. And it also fits because I want to congratulate the Canadian banks on 40, over $40 billion of profit through COVID. So I want to say congratulations to all the Canadian banks who managed to make this period of time over COVID one of their most profitable. I think, you know, <laughs> we, should, we, should all, we should all hand it to them. So congratulations from, from me, from, from Justin, Justin. Uh, from Matt, and from the Traveling Wilburys. Uh, Jay, I don't know if you want me to add your name to that list. You might get your bank accounts pulled. I'm just, I'm just trying to figure out the tone we're going for here because I'm, feel, I'm feeling like that might not exactly be heartfelt congratulations that you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> just, I'm just sensing a little bit of it. Yeah, I mean, let's yeah. Let's, let's, dive, let's, let's, let's dive a little bit deeper into that. I mean, is you know, the general public, those people that are, that are giving banks their fees and their money and, and their mortgages, are, they, are we missing something that banks are, are doing so well and yet we don't really seem to get passed down any type of savings our way? So banks make their profits in a bunch of different ways. Um, the, you know, the, the ones that we kind of assume are that they do it through investment banking and by you know, taking companies public and lending companies money. But one of their largest profit centers is something called NIMS, net interest margins. And it, it, one of their second largest profit centers is fees. And those fees are the fees that we pay on our bank accounts. Uh, net interest margins is basically the difference between what you pay in interest and what you receive in interest from your bank. And they have these clever ways to torque up the amount that they receive from you and reduce the amount that they pay you. One of the ways they, they can reduce the amount that they pay you is by receiving money from the Bank of Canada to supplement the money they have of yours. And multiply the money that they have of yours by factors of, in some cases, a hundred in order to lend it back out. So there's a real potency in how the bank takes your money and gives you money. That relationship is not symbiotic. So we have to understand that, that as a Canadian consumer, you receive no benefit by paying more on your debt and you receive no benefit by receiving less on your investments. And the best way that you can approach this is just every single time you enter into any kind of negotiation with your bank, check out a couple other options. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's for, we're fortunate in Canada right now because mortgage brokers are gaining traction and there's companies like ours. There's lots of great companies. There's, you know, we've got an investment fund, we've got our mortgage business and we're able to get our messaging out clearly and concisely as to what we think consumers should do. It's not, it's, listen, it's tongue in cheek from time to time because mm -hmm. it kind of has to be to keep it fun. Um, but it is really serious, right? Like uh, the last show that we were just listening to, they were talking about what a difference one percentage point makes in fees um, to a financial advisor. And, you know, you better believe that uh, I, most Canadians have a hell of a lot more that they owe on their mortgage than what they have with a financial advisor. And just as critical as trying to negotiate down what you pay a financial advisor is paying down what you pay on your mortgage. And mm. most mortgages right now are about 1% out of the money. 
So 1% on a million bucks is $10,000 a year in after-tax income. So I'm, I'm curious, guys, because you know uh, I'm the guy that's going to ask the really simple questions because I always believe you're always getting someone that's listening to your show for the very, very first time. So if I'm, I'm, I'm calling you guys, I'm getting online, checking you guys out, um, I'm sitting in your office, what is it specifically that, that I'm going to get you to do for me when it comes to, to my mortgage, my, my, my investments? So yeah, it really would depend on, on who, who we're speaking to because okay. the, the most critical piece of starting the relationship with any of our borrowers is we got to listen. So when you call, you'll find you know, one of our, uh, our, our eight mortgage agents is going to ask a lot of questions. They're going to ask questions around timeline. You know, how long... Do you plan on having this mortgage? How long do you plan on having this house? They're going to ask questions on goals. You know, where do you want to be in five, 10 years? What, you know, what age are you? Like there's, it's a really comprehensive financial plan. There's really simple stuff you can do right off the bat, right? Like what's the interest rate on your mortgage? Okay. We know that today you got to be sub 2% on a fixed rate. You got to be, you know, you could be, you know, sub 1.5% on a variable rate. So we're talking like, you know, 1.45, 1.4%. Um, and if you're out there listening, this should be the first impetus for you to, to call us or call somebody, uh, even just call your bank and yell at them first. But there's, there's these kind of simple little tests that we can run. Uh, we know what we can provide on an investment account. We know what we can provide on a mortgage and we know what people should be getting. And, um, you know, it, it's a process. It's, you know, it's a lot of listening at the start. And then our goal is to make sure that first off, when, when we first engage and work with you, that we're leaving you better off than we found, than we found you when we got you and that it's continuous so that every single month, every single year, every single time a mortgage rate changes, every single time your situation changes, we're evolving to get you to lower and lower cost capital. That's the goal. And that's why so makes us successful. When you talk about those specific scenarios, someone at 71010 writes, I've got a scenario for you guys. Maybe you can help me out. I rent in the city of Toronto. I don't own a home, but I do own a vacation property. When my mortgage is up on my vacation property with, with the banks you guys were talking about, is it advantageous for me to come to someone like you? To buy. Um, okay, so here's the things I would consider in giving this advice. Number one, we are, and I spoke about it a little bit last week, we're, we're in the middle of a tug of war between interest rates and inflation. And I think that the Bank of Canada is telegraphing to us that interest rates are going to stay low uh, and accommodative for, for, like, they're willing to err on the side of caution with not increasing them too quickly. So we'll probably see asset prices run up a little bit more, but I, uh, it does worry me, you know, to see Canadians rushing into the property market right now. I would say on, you know, because it's kind of two parts to unpack here. The other part, you get a mortgage on a vacation property and it's very likely that if it's coming up for renewal in the next year or two, it's probably already out of the money. And whoever that mortgage is with right now is not going to tell you that you could save money by breaking it and borrowing cheaper money from them. So... I think like I'd unpack that first. I'd say, okay, like even if you're not buying a place, let's have a look at whatever that mortgage is on that vacation property and see if we can engineer that down. And that's a really simple calculation. We take the interest rate of the mortgage, we take the amount of time left, and we take the lender, and we arrive at the exact penalty calculation as we calculate it, not as they calculate it. And there's a big difference. I, like we did a we did an analysis on our on our break penalties recently over the last 10 years. And we found that we can engineer a break penalty for a mortgage about 20 to 25% lower than the initial quote that comes from the bank you want to break it with. So, and then you can arrive at the savings pretty easily, right? There's a difference between the interest rate that you paid on the mortgage that you've got and the interest rate you're going to get on the new mortgage over the amount of time you have remaining. So if you get a 2.5 and you're going to switch to a 1.5 and your mortgage is 500 grand, you know, you're going to save $5,000 a year. Mm. You got two years left. That's 10 grand in your jeans. As long as the penalty to break that existing mortgage doesn't exceed $10,000, you probably actually want that penalty to be about no more than eight. 
because it is a pain to break a mortgage, right? Mm -hmm. You got to get some paperwork together. You got to, right. you know, shop it around. So like figure out what your pain point is. But I would say for most, for most borrowers, it's about 2000 or 1500 bucks. And uh, if it isn't that much, you know, you want, we, we would advise them that like, you know, it's, it's going to take a couple hours of, of your life to do this. And then, so then we we calculate how we're going to break your penalty. We calculate how we're going to save your, you money on your existing mortgage. If that's possible, then we start looking at what you might want to buy and maybe insulate you a little bit from what's going on in the real estate market. Like maybe it's something that has some rental income that you're buying. Uh, it's also dependent on what you're paying in rent right now. Maybe you get a good deal on what you're paying. Um, maybe there's somewhere else you could put equity from that vacation property. So there's a lot of options, right? The monkey man. Welcome back. It's the Mortgage Show here on News Talk 1010, providing the industry-leading direction and customer service that Connect is known for. We're back with founder and CEO of Connect, Marcus Severus, principal broker Justin Turner, and CSR specialist Matthew Scanlon. We're live at 416-872-1010, 416-872-1010 for your questions, or you can text us at 71010. That Twitter and the Monkey Man is one of those songs that if, if you're on the air, and you're doing this job, guys, you sometimes forget that you're actually working and you sometimes are halfway through the song and go, I'm supposed to talk now. And you know, honestly, I was just thinking while I was listening to that, <laughs> that, that song probably would have never been created if either Tweeter or the Monkey Man had a decent mortgage because they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have had to resort to selling cocaine and hash. Mm. They wouldn't have got busted by the undercover cop. Like w the story wouldn't exist if for the fact that either Tweeter or the monkey man had would called, have listened to our show. Had called connect. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's really well done. We have um, a number of people to get to today. We've got some, some emails that you guys are going to get to as well. Uh, we want to thank Ryan. Ryan's been on hold for a while. Welcome to the show, Ryan. Hey, thanks. Uh, it's good to be here. What's your question for the guys today? Um, well, I've heard you guys a few times now on uh, 1010. I've, called to a few uh, different lending options to see if they can help, but they said they wouldn't be able to because my income isn't where it needs to be given that I'm, I'm self-employed. I have a few investment opportunities that I'd love to be able to take advantage of, but ideally I'd love to do it without breaking any current investment positions that I have. Uh, I was wondering if there's anything you guys can do to help quickly. I think a lot of these opportunities are time sensitive and I don't want to wait too much longer. Uh, yeah. Thanks. All right. There's a good question. So, uh, Ryan, right? Ryan. Ryan. Yeah. Ryan. Okay. So yeah. I'll, I'll tell you this, babe. um, and, and this is the last time that I'm going to slam the banks in the next five, six minutes. That's a lie. Um, but no one really realizes this. When you go to your bank, the person that you're speaking to, to give you options does not have to be trained in mortgages. They do not need a license. They do not have to go to school. They don't have to keep their continuing education credits up. They just have to know whatever product that bank has and whatever mandate that bank has for lending. And like we said, net interest margins dictate how a bank's policies are created. So if you're self-employed, uh, there are significant restrictions that the banks have when they lend you money. And it sounds like you've got an investment portfolio with the bank. So it's actually kind of shows you some of the short sightedness because if the bank doesn't provide you with the capital that you need, you might liquidate some of your investments. Those investments, if they are at that bank would be a loss for that bank. Um, I, without getting into, you know, too much of your exact personal details, this is what I would say. Number one, it sounds like you got equity in the house. So when you're looking at doing anything with the with your home, with extracting equity, with utilizing the capital that you've built up, it's, it's dip, the pricing and the availability of that, of that equity is based on how much of it you have. So the difference between your mortgage and your property value, it's also based on your income and your credit. So you might have great credit, you might have lots of equity, but if your income doesn't service the amount of debt that you're looking to take in accordance with whatever the rule is at your specific financial institution, they're going to say no. The idea behind Connect, and we, we focused a little bit about this on last, last week's show, is to help you use the equity 
for whatever purpose you're looking to use it for, but also to ensure that you're constantly evolving to lower priced debt. So in a situation like yours, I would say, we have a look at it. If you don't want to break your existing mortgage for whatever reason, that's fine. We'd look at it for sure, because if if it makes sense to break your mortgage, you're going to break your mortgage. Uh, You're just, you know, giving someone else profit. And a lot of times it doesn't make sense. Like if the timeline that you need the capital for, like the time you're going to use it and then repay it isn't an extended period of time, it might not make sense to break your mortgage. So you might be on the right track. What I would say is you can definitely get a home equity loan and home equity loans are priced pretty similarly, pretty fair to the market. So like if you go on Connect's website and you just enter in your property address, it will spit out a price for your home equity loan. It's the only tool like this that exists in Canada. Um, we've got, you know, a technology that pulls in all kinds of information like, you know, property value and mortgage details and how much you bought your house for and who you are and pulls it all in and it spits out a rate to you. Whereas any bank or any of our competitors, they want you to call them. And the reason why they want you to call them is so they can figure out what kind of a need you have for the capital, how soon you need it, how much you need. And then they can kind of game you as to what the price is. Connect's all about transparency, all about unbiased. So you don't, you don't have to call us. You can just go to the website, download your approval, and you know it's the absolute best rate that can be provided based on your specific risk criteria. At that point, we want to get on the phone with you, right? We've, we've, we've shown you ours, time to show us yours. So we, you get on the phone with us, and at that point, we get into some of the mechanics behind how the loan works. And if we can help you over the time period that you're borrowing that money, then we know it's going to be a really good fit. So, you know, you came to us, you got told no somewhere at your bank, let's say. We're going to fix that no. 70% of our borrowers, maybe it's a little more now, but we did another analysis on our portfolio, but 70% of our borrowers switch from whatever product they have to something that costs them less into the term of the loan that we give them. And it's powerful stuff. That's, that means that we're not just looking to give you whatever dollar amount of money you've asked for. We're going to make sure that while you've borrowed that capital from us, we're going to help you get to cheaper money. And it's not complicated. It's either credit or income that's deficient on your application. And if it's income, it just means that someone hasn't looked hard enough. Like you're self-employed. You've got investments. You got equity in your house. Someone's telling you you can't borrow more to invest more. Like logically, when you think about that, you are not increasing your risk profile with anybody. You're actually decreasing it. You're smart. You see that interest rates are at 1.5% and that inflation is coming into the marketplace. It's a good opportunity to use some of that low cost capital to create a return, especially considering that inflation is tracking above 1.5%. So if you're sitting, if, you know, if it's Ryan or if it's someone else that's sitting at home thinking about this, The Bank of Canada is telling us that our economy is getting hot. They're also telling us they're going to leave interest rates low so that Canadians can get a benefit. Unfortunately, the gatekeeper of the capital, which is your bank or your primary financial institution, does not want you taking more money out. No, sir. They want you in the mortgage that you have, paying an inflated price so that next year, instead of $40 billion in profits, I guarantee you that the banks exceed $60 billion, by the way, for 2021. Okay, next 12 months. Remember this, Matt. Yeah. Uh, so what I would say to you is, you got to speak to somebody, go to the website and get your, get your price quote right away, right? And that'll tell you like, okay, this is how much the money on my house costs. This is what the market rate for a home equity loan is for me. And then at that point, give us a call and let's see not only how we can get you that money, and we do it within 24 hours. So you get approved online instantly. We get you the money in your bank account within 24 hours. You know it's going to be the best price on the market. And then you know we're going to work with you to get you to cheaper capital. Is it a given that as we find our way out of what we're inside of right now and things start to get better, that people are going to start really looking deeper into their finances, sort of 
either to have a job change, career change, life change, move, upscale, downscale, bigger house, smaller house. Do you think this is going to have more people banging on your door because they really want to know what's going on with their money because this was such a like a wrench in the works of everything that people are just really refocusing on everything in their lives? That's a good point. That's a good point. I think you're you're onto something. I think you're onto something for for two reasons. I think one reason is that during this pandemic, people were down. People were mm. depressed. People when you're down and you think that you're out and you're, you know, you don't have a shot, you're not picking up the phone to call connect. <laughs> you're covering your head up with the covers. And now we're starting to get some good news. And, you know, we're poking our head out from underneath the covers and we're saying, okay, like I can do this. Like I can get this organized. And I really do sincerely hope that more and more people understand one, one critical fact that whatever you're in, whatever spot you're in, it's going to get better. The market's turning, the economy's turning, lots of money is in it. You know, like this, this is not a dress rehearsal, right? Like you get one shot around this. So, you know, the sooner you grab the, the reins of your finances and the rest of your life, the better off you're going to be. And if it's, if it seems bleak, it's not that bleak. It's going to get better. Welcome back to The Mortgage Show, right here on News Talk 1010. Providing the industry-leading direction and customer service Connect is known for. We're back with founder and CEO of Connect, Marcus Seferis, principal broker Justin Turner, and customer service specialist Matthew Scanlon. Guys, how you doing so far? Great. I, that was, that's my favorite traveling Wilbury song. So that was great for me. It was, was almost like, euphoric. Like those guys yeah. had a good mortgage there in that song. That was yeah. <laughs> and I was having hey, a good dance. They're in the car. Hair's blowing in the breeze. Yeah. Have, have, yeah. Any, have any of you guys seen Running Down a Dream, the Tom Petty documentary? Yes, I have not. The yeah. traveling Wilburys get a, a, a good chunk of that. And it was just watching those guys come together was just, it was pretty cool to see. Isn't it, wasn't it because they all had contracts? Like each one of them, Roy Orbison, George Harrison, Tom Petty. Uh, who there was the fourth one? one. Yeah, there's another one too. Oh, um, Dylan? Bob Did Dylan. Did say Dylan? Yeah, no. Yeah. So they each had contracts with separate record labels and none of their record labels will let them out of their contract to do an album together. So they named, like they, they named themselves Otis Wilbury and whatever Wilbury. That's right. And then they just, like they did no, I don't think they had videos. I think it just like they released the album together. Interesting. Yeah. I like a little yeah, backstory. And, yeah. And just as they, just as they, as they broke big and were starting to get ready to tour, Roy Orbison died. Yeah. Mm. Which is why in the end of the line video, you see just the picture beside the guitar of Roy Orbison. Oh, I didn't know that. That's cool. That would have been, that would have been a, a show to see. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, 416-872-1010 to talk to us this afternoon. You can text the show at 71010. Um, I know Justin's got some emails that we're going to get to in just a second, but Johnny's been waiting through the break. We appreciate it. What's up, Johnny? Are you there? Hey, guys. How are you? Hey, what can we do for you today? Yeah, so I'm just calling on behalf of my father. You know, he's a little nervous to call in, so I just thought I'd call in for him. But okay. throwing him under the bus, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretty much he's uh, self-employed. He's looking to expand his business and purchase some more inventory. But uh, he can't really do much because his recent year wasn't that strong. And they've been stringing him along for quite a while. So I feel really bad for him. I was hoping to call in and maybe uh, see if there's a solution for him. So that's so good. first off, I'm, I'm, nice I'm sorry to hear. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry to hear about Thanks, what John. you're going through. That's tough. Um, you know, depending on what kind of business he's in, uh, you know, whether it has been operating and just at a lower level, um, you know, there's definitely some options here, right? And and the the idea that I'm hearing here to expand the business and, you know, to hopefully pick back up is in the long run going to make him bankable, but, you know, the banks don't see anything in past the, you know, the end of their desk, right? So, yeah. so, so there definitely is options. Uh, for your dad, whether it be, you know, a cash injection that Connect can help out with, we, we you know, we start at $399 here, or, or there are different lending options from non-bank lenders that will look at the more 
uh, recent sales from your from your dad's business. So if it's something that you know he's been operating at a lower level, but there still is sales, um, then that's something that we can take a look at as well. You know what I mean? So so, so there definitely out. is options. Here's a couple of nuggets. Okay, nugget number one. Nugget one. It is only the Canadian banks that require your income to meet a stress test threshold of you know, roughly two and a half to three points above what the mortgage rate you're receiving is, right? So it's only the Canadian banks. You can go to a credit union that will not require the same level of income as your bank does. Number one, target, nugget, okay? Number two, there are also tons of what are called B lenders, home mm -hmm. capital group, equitable bank, community trust. Like there are tons of them. Understand that the same problem of interest rates versus asset price inflation that the world is going through is magnified in pension funds and mutual funds. So capital's trying to find a house. Money's trying to find a spot to create a return and use that to your advantage. Understand that it's not just your bank and these other players are more intelligent. And they will make exceptions and they will look at where you're going and not just where you were over the last year. Mm. So those are two things that I'll tell you the, the final point is, yes, you know, connect is one source of capital. We've got our own investment fund and we are so excited to help people in the exact situation your dad's in. Hey, it didn't, it wasn't just your dad that had a bad year last year. Everybody had a bad year last year. And we want to help as many people as we can get out of that bad year. And the only way you're going to do it is by doing things like your dad is doing, by taking some money out, by investing it in your business and capitalizing upon what growth will come. You can't just sit back, right? Mm. So um, we'd love to help them. Yeah. Our home equity loan rates start at 3.99% for sure. You can put in, but if it's not the best option to borrow that money, if it's a better option to break mortgage, renegotiate with your existing first lender, take a B mortgage, take a mortgage from a credit union, whatever the best option is what you're going to get. The one thing I want to really, really clarify is that when you call Connect, the person that you speak to, whoever it is here, is not paid any more or less money based on the product that you receive. Everyone's on salary. Every single person here makes their money on a salary. They're chosen because they're amazing. They're chosen because they have knowledge. And they are here to guide you through whatever you're dealing with in an unbiased manner. Okay. The final thing I want to say, because it shines through in a lot of these calls, is that what the banks don't understand is that the most toxic thing that they can do to their borrowers, to their clients, is waste their damn time. Mm. And we see it all the time, right? We get a phone call in and somebody says, you know, I'm just, I went to my bank a couple months ago and I asked them about getting some more money out in my bank. You know, I'm waiting for them to get back to me. You know, it, it, banks, if you're listening, if you could just respond in a timely fashion, like everyone else in the business world does, I think you'd go a long way to creating goodwill. And then maybe you wouldn't have to spend so much damn money advertising that people are richer than they think, or they have a friend in their bank because it's all garbage. Just get back to people in a normal amount of time. Mm. Anyway, so that's, I guess, three nuggets of wisdom. <laughs> I, Marcus, I don't like to correct. I don't want to correct you because we've kind of just met. I don't want to point out a mistake, but you, you said that, that, that everybody had a bad year last year, but we, we all know that the banks had a great year because you said that off the top. Yes. No, you know what, actually, you know what, Jay, Jay, I don't mind. I love being corrected. I don't mind at all. Like I'm, I've been married for uh, 10 years. Oh, okay. uh, so, but I will say this for the banks, 40 billion is a garbage year. Like the uh, next year, this next year, watch those profits. They're going to exceed 60 billion. Just not I, a garbage year for anybody else. Anybody no, else, yeah. And when you think about it, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead, John. No, go ahead. I just wanted to follow up on something that Johnny said and that's something that you said as well. When Johnny said, you know, my dad's nervous. He doesn't want to, he doesn't want to ask a question. So I'm going to do it for him. We got about 90 seconds left. And um, I was just curious, is that one of the things that you have to help people get, get, get over when they call you is that they're, they're nervous to ask about, which is interesting, their own money. Yeah. Yeah. It's, but they've been, they've been trained. Like we've been trained to be nervous about it. 
we've been trained that like our bank is the only place we should go to and who else can I ask? And it's my personal information. So, but that's not the consumer's fault, right? That's, that's my fault. That's Connect's fault. Connect has to make sure that we're communicating a message that we are unbiased, that we're going to give you as much information as we can without you having to give much so that we can build that bond, that initial bond. And then I can tell you something. I've been doing this for 20 years now. We are a snowball. Our snowball gets bigger and more powerful and faster every single day. And the only way that happens is because of how we treat our borrowers. Our borrowers bring us more borrowers. Our borrowers become our investors. Mm. Our investors bring us more investors. Like if you dive into Connect, like look at our Instagram account and all these other corny things, I think that the personality of our company is going to shine through to you. You go to our website. I mean, like once a week, we're going out. Like what did we do Friday night? The whole team went painting, painting classes. for Justin's birthday. So right? Marcus like, painted a monkey and everyone else painted a cat. I don't know what that well, was about. I, I painted a cat the week before. Right. I was going to paint a cat every single day. It was day. my birthday, by the way. Yeah, Justin picked cats and I didn't want to do a cat. <laughs> Sometimes you got to march to the beat of your own drum, Justin. Exactly. Welcome back to the Mortgage Show here on News Talk 1010. I was going to wait for Orbison to come in, but I, I couldn't wait that long. You know what I did during the break, guys? I actually updated my Spotify playlist and downloaded the This Is Traveling Millbury. Yes. Nice. You know who's ever you picking them? You, you reignited who's ever, it. Who's ever picking them is picking great tracks. Yeah. You nailed it, Mike. I mean, three, it, of them, three of them we gave Mike. This one is his. Uh, <laughs> this was his. Uh, he went uh, rogue. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, this is perfect, though. Like it, and you know what? Like handle me with care. We were just talking about the banks not taking yeah. care of people. There you go, Mike. You are a superstar, Policimo. Dude, nailing it. Welcome back to the Mortgage Show, providing the industry-leading direction and customer service. Connect is known for. We're back with founder and CEO Marcus Seferis, principal broker Justin Turner, and CSR specialist Matthew Scanlon. You guys really, the whole staff really went out and took a painting class. Yeah, we do crazy. We do things mm -hmm. like this all the time, right? But it was Justin's birthday. And they have these great places. We should plug that place. It was really good. What was it called? P uh, P P no, P uh, I'm going to say it wrong. Pinoy Palette. Pinoy's Palette, I think it was called. Oh, Pino. Pino. Pino like Palette. The wine losers. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. You guys <laughs> That's are That's great. I don't drink. <laughs> these guys are dumb. Uh, they're good at mortgages, though. Uh, but yeah, no, it was called, it was called, hey, listen, I want, a, I want a mortgage specialist, not a sommelier. Exactly. <laughs> uh, well, one thing's for sure is we're not artists. That's for sure. Yeah. Speak for yourself. What other buddy. kind of stuff? What other kind of stuff do you guys, do you guys do? I mean, we've gone bowling, um, a lot of barbecuing uh, in my yeah, backyard, a lot of barbecuing yeah. and a lot of eating. Yeah. We do a yeah. lot of eating. Yeah, yeah. A lot of eating. We run yeah, on Monday morning. So we have a Monday morning meeting where we all kind of get together and go through like the complicated files and people we were trying to figure out solutions for. And we right. started off and a couple of us, not all of us, Matt Scanlon meet in advance <laughs> and we go for a little run around high park, seven o'clock in the morning. You can find us on Mondays at 7 a.m. running through high park. Yes. Wow. And if you want to see, check out any of our art, check out uh, connect.ca Instagram. Yes. Oh, wow. You got to get up there. It's all up there, right? Yep. yep. Everything's up there. Oh, this is fun, I was, guys. I was listening to, to last week's show, and one of the things that stuck out to me was, you know, that you guys, you know, you talk about how quickly you can get things done on your website and how quickly you can get things done via the phone and stuff. But you also say that you probably take longer with a file than the other guys do. And there's a reason behind that, because you want to you do what? Yeah, so like the, 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 the beginning, the initial period of listening and learning about the borrower, we got to make sure that our solution's perfect. Mm -hmm. We got to make sure that we've exhausted the search for the loan that you're going to get now. And in many cases, the next loan afterwards too. And you got to set it up properly. Kind of like painting a picture guys, mm -hmm. <laughs> but really, I mean, uh, and you can learn a lot like about us from these, these shows that we're doing every week. We've got them all up on our YouTube channel too. And um, so you can like subscribe there and watch them uh, and you can see us while we're in the studio with Jay or Ian um, jibber jabbering about mortgages. Are we allowed to call you mad dog? I've been wondering that the whole time. You can. Nice. Absolutely. If we ever, this is, that's, I'm going to just call you mad dog from now on. <laughs> no, that's cool. I still I answer it. to it. Perfect. 
people say, how long are you going to keep the, the name Mad Dog? And I say, until the, uh, the test marketing comes back negative. Yeah. <laughs> as long as people are still into it, I'm yeah. totally cool. I'm totally cool having that. And I for mean, people that are listening that don't know, that's my, my previous incarnation was uh, an FM morning guy. And I yeah. did a couple shows as Mad Dog. Mad Dog and Billy, Mad Dog and Mora, Mad Dog and Darren, if you go back far enough, Darren Jones. A lot of people know as well. From no TV. way, Darren. You did a show with Darren Jones? When I first came to Toronto in 99, Darren Jones was my co-host. That's a, Yeah, like I, I'm. everybody might know him from like from the, MTV the Canada, but I remember MTV Buzz, Canada, Buzz. Yeah, yeah Buzz TV his show MTV with Mr. Moe. His Mr. MTV Mo. show was awesome, yeah, with Mr. Moe. But Darren left after nine months because Darren was a 22-year-old Ryerson student while he was doing this morning show. Wow. Like literally he was, he was plucked because he's, he's just super talented and he, he ended up going right into stand up, and then he moved to Los Angeles and his wife's a writer and they both write and, and now Darren's back on the radio in Toronto. Cool. Crazy. So there you go. Hey, listen, I don't want to eat up all the time talking about me, uh, but that was very nice of you, but I'm curious because you guys put together a couple of emails you want to get through. We got about yeah. five minutes left. So I want to make sure we get to a couple. How happy is Justin right now, by the way? I always compile my favorite emails from the week and I never get to read them because people are calling in. But we love your call in, so don't worry. So I'm going to get right into it. Okay. So we have Daryl from Toronto uh, uh, who emailed us and asked, so I'm living in Toronto and I'm coming up for renewal and it seems that Connect has much better options than my bank. They're offering me something like 2.2%. Trash. <laughs> and I'm also a private banking client and have seen some success with my investments lately, but generally they're just, they just hover around my initial investments. I saw on your website that you have a re your return is very steady, and I'd love to hear about that as well. Ooh, fun. This is a fun question. It's a double down. You want to start on the mortgage rates, and then I'll talk about the investments? Yeah. So, I mean, listen, 2.2, <clears throat> uh, not, not a great rate, um, which brings me to some of the favorite things that I hear from clients is, you know, when you give them a rate and they go back to their lender or their, their bank that offered them that original, that original rate, and they say... There's nothing that we can do. You might as well just go with that guy, which we do hear a lot. But we also do hear, no problem, you know, we'll match that, which is very common. But the question that you need to ask yourself is, why didn't I get that rate in the first place, right? Um, you know, so, you know, what I would say is, give us a shout. We can go over your renewal options. And as for the investment stuff, I mean, Marcus is definitely the best person to speak to about that. Yeah, you know, before I want to put one fine point on what you just said. The other thing that you got to know is that if your bank is competing with us for your mortgage rate mm. and they start out at 2.2, which is, you know, like 50 to 70 basis points higher than what it should be, half yes. a percent to 0.7%, you know, higher. Understand that if they do come down to match our interest rate, you're going to have two problems. Problem number one is that the penalty to break your mortgage with your bank, if you ever need to break it in the next, let's say, five years, will be calculated significantly higher than the penalty to break your mortgage with one of the mortgage finance companies that we work with. Mm. They are actually allowed, the banks are allowed to charge penalties that are significantly higher than their competitors. And again, I think it's something that they don't realize probably hurts them, but it's so profitable for them when you break your mortgage. And the greater the discount that you receive when you receive your mortgage initially, the greater the penalty when it comes time to break your mortgage. The discount is actually factored into how they calculate your penalty. So when you negotiate with them for 70 basis points off, because Connect is offering you 70 basis points off, they're licking their chops. Mm. Because that 70 basis points, in the event that you have to break your mortgage, and here's a fun fact, 75% of all Canadians break their mortgage before the end of the term. So they're licking their chops, thinking to themselves, <laughs> this idiot <laughs> thinks I'm going to give him 70 basis points at a better rate. 75% chance that money's coming right back here in the penalty. Mm. Okay, so that's number one. And if it's a variable rate mortgage, it's even worse. If they're competing with us on a variable rate mortgage and they come down to meet our interest rate, you better believe that you are going to get phone calls from these amazingly unbiased people at the bank with a script telling you that you better lock into a fixed rate. And I'm the fixed rate that you get offered from your bank when it is time to lock in takes into account the expense to break your variable rate mortgage. Okay, that's it. Fine point on those things. Finally, investments. Connect does investments. Connect does investments extremely well. How? 
So Connect over the last almost 10 years has returned 8% every single year to its investors. And you got to say, you know, for the OSC and Fisco, you got to say that past performance is not indicative of the future, but I can tell you this, the loan to value. So the amount of money that Connect lends based on the value of the properties it lends it against currently sits at about 50%, very stable returns, very, very comfortable equity position on the loans that we're doing. Connect has never lost a dollar of investor capital. Mm. And because of the way we operate Connect, because Connect's capital is meant to lend money to Connect's good borrowers, we get the money back because we're helping our borrowers pay it back. So if you're thinking about what to do with your investor capital, it's, I mean, it's not sexy, it's 8% a year, but it is safe and my mom and dad are in it and I'm in it and I'm Justin's in it. in it. Everybody that works here is in it. Matt's in it. Uh, so we definitely stand behind what we're up to. My takeaway is going to be my mom and dad are in it today, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I perk my ears up. Like, yeah. If your mom and dad are in, if your mom and dad are in, I'm pretty much in. Guys, we have to leave it there. Marcus Seferis, Justin Turner, Matthew Scanlon. Thank you for letting me uh, share an hour with you guys today. I had a good time. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks Matt. Man. That was Thanks, great. Matt Dog. <laughs> Thank you. Happy painting. Happy running. Thanks. Happy barbecuing.